welcome back to one stop law now in the history of a nation we often find certain events that remain a blistering wound even years after when we talk about india's history the exodus of kashmiri pandits from the valley in 1990s is one such wound that still remains fresh and this wound which instead of being healed has been exploited time and again for politics profit and propaganda their story was never really heard although at times the trauma the plight fades from the collective memory but time and again we are forced to acknowledge the injustice caused to the victims and this time it is the film the kashmir files directed by vivek agnihotri which has shed light on the exodus of kashmiri pandits from the valley the kashmiri pandit massacre portrayed in the movie is being getting getting huge support from the masses people are thronging in theaters to watch the movie the movie has received heavy praises from the indian prime minister so much so that many bjp run states in the country like madhya pradesh gujarat karnataka haryana have made this movie tax free not only that in madhya pradesh the home minister of the state mr narottam mishra has even announced that the police personnel in the state will be given a day off to watch this movie similarly the assam chief minister hemant biswa sharma has also announced half day holiday for the government employees to watch the film so while on one hand the movie is getting tremendous response from the audience or and on the other hand the movie has sparked a debate on the exodus of kashmiri pandits once again at the instance of different political parties and their versions of so called truths so the movie has actually brought back the memories of the exodus or ethnic cleansing of kashmiri pandits from the kashmir valley when about 4 to 5 lakhs of people were driven out from their homes to become refugees in their own country much before the term ethnic cleansing became familiar in parts of europe at the balkans it happened in our very own india and unlike there at the balkans where it was done with the minorities in india this was a local minority that is the kashmiri pandits a local minority in the particular state of jammu and kashmir but not a minority in the country as a whole so to that extent it became even more remarkable much discussion will now go on surrounding this movie for some time as to what exactly happened or who were to blame etc now in this video i am not going to get into any of those de- debates what i'll do i'll give you certain dates and events as to exactly what happened and then leave it up to you to decide or arrive at your own conclusion as to who to blame the congress the bjp supported vp singh government pakistan or the local politicians of kashmir valley so let's look into the chronology of the events on the exodus of kashmiri pandits in this video first of all let us go back to early 1975 when mrs indira gandhi and sheikh abdullah signed an accord known as the indira abdullah accord whereby sheikh abdullah took power in kashmir now sheikh abdullah was undoubtedly a very popular leader in in kashmir jammu and kashmir but it looks like there was a lot of resistance to this accord and he did take the state at little bit towards islamization because some of his speeches around that time were not truly in the spirit of the accord thereafter in 1982 after sheikh abdullah passed away national conference his party came under the control of his own son farooq abdullah and farooq abdullah became the uh, chief minister of jammu and kashmir after he won the elections in 1983 the next important date was 2nd of july 1984 when farooq abdullah government was dismissed by the congress party from the center on many allegations uh, mainly because farooq abdullah was not uh, working in terms of congress and in extremely cynical operation uh, the congress government from the center new delhi appointed farooq abdullah's brother in law gulam mohammad shah popularly known as gul shah as the chief minister now this gulam mohammad shah was never a very likable person in kashmir when he was met uh, and then he was met cm partly because of 
Farooq Abdullah and partly because it was thought that he will continue to remain uh, you know a pawn to Congress and centers bidding but he did not do any such thing in fact he ran a very rough government and he soon started spreading the bogey that Islam is in danger and started much more aggressive Islamization in India in Kashmir now this interference of New Delhi in Kashmir's administration dismissing an ongoing government of Farooq Abdullah was never taken very uh, in, a, in a good spirit by the locals in the Kashmir so with this interference of central government um, it instilled both anger and instability in the Kashmir Valley organizations like Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front that is JKLF increased its operation in Kashmir which got support from the local Kashmiris as well now in the meantime in 1986 under the Rajiv Gandhi regime the locks of the Babri Masjid were opened and he allowed puja there this action allowed Pakistan backed terrorists in Kashmir to divide the people of Kashmir as a result in February 1986 the first Hindu Muslim riots took place in Kashmir and uh, the chief minister Ghulam Muhammad uh, Shah allowed Muslims to mosques places in secretariat and so the Hindus also protested in Jammu and there were chain reaction of riots many Hindu temples were attacked and destroyed in Kashmir Valley followed by attacks on Kashmiri Pandits their shops and houses so under the chief ministership of uh, this Ghulam Muhammad Shah Kash Kashmir faced this one big crisis of communal riot for the very first time now to damage control this crisis the Congress appointed Jagmohan Malhotra as the governor of Kashmir and sent him there on 12th March 1986 now in this regard it is it needs to be mentioned that many uh, many people relate Jag, Mr. Jagmohan only with BJP or BJP appointed government or with only uh, v, VP Singh's government no Mr. Jagmohan Malhotra served two tenures as governor of Kashmir the first full five years he termed uh, he served was actually the term he uh, he was appointed by the Congress government so uh, Mr. Jagmohan was sent to uh, Kashmir to address this situation and the very first thing he did was to dismiss the Gulsha government now here also it needs to be mentioned that he is known as the master of dismissal because he has not only dismissed this government again he will dismiss another government which we will come across in few in few minutes so Mr. Jagmohan was sent there to address the situation and the very first thing he did was to uh, suspend this Gulsha government the state thus came in presidential rule and uh, however the things had already started going from bad to worse by this time because at that time many other complex factors were going on around the world as in 1979-80s the Afghan Jihad had already picked up and Pakistani army and ISI under Jiaul Haq were seeing whether they could use the same techniques in Kashmir as long as they were Islam is Islamized Kashmir to their idea of Islam which is Wahhabi Islam and that is how all the money started to come to the Wahhabi mosques and the change in the character of Kashmiri Islam uh, had already started during that time then came the most infamous elections of 1987 the Kashmir uh, legislative assembly elections which was very badly rigged uh, by uh, the Congress and the then Farooq Abdullah government and which shook actually the faith of Kashmiri people in democracy because so many people became rebels after that election and many Kashmiri youths actually uh, turned to militancy after that election Gilani had filed nomination Yasin Malik who was a campaigner uh, many, the, many of these people who actually formed that Muslim United uh, Front even if they had you know won the elections hardly they would have got 10 to 12 seats but and that would not have done much damage to the Congress or say Farooq Abdullah's party but yet out of arrogance the Congress party and Farooq Abdullah rigged that election and these people these Muslim uh, people of the Muslim United Front, uh, Front who had filed nominations who lost the election became more disillusioned and finally they became separatists separatists 
so clearly the people of kashmir understood that kashmir was being controlled completely from new delhi and then um, during this time actually uh, the situation in kashmir was such that faruk abdullah was running the state after that election with very little, with very little credibility and meanwhile this muf muslim united front people had become more separatists and jklf jammu kashmir uh, liberation uh, front people have become much more active in kashmir militancy was spreading this jklf pretended to be secular from outside but from deep inside an essential impulse of them was islamist to the core and therefore they were uh, spreading militancy across the state then on 14 september 1989 came the triggering blow from the jklf when they carried out the first targeted assassin- assassination of kashmiri pandit the local bjp uh, leader of the kashmir valley tikalal taplu and this was also a complete failure on the part of the kashmir administration to control the militancy uh, in the valleys at that time now this time around interesting things were going on in indian national politics as well because uh, india was heading towards its own national election ram janmabhoomi was becoming an issue and bjp was making big names and rajiv gandhi was on his decline so as expected on 2nd december 1989 vp singh was sworn as the prime minister of india he formed his own government with you know the support of uh, Uh, LK Advani led BJP from outside and uh, honestly his government was the weakest government in the history of India on all issues of security be it internal or external the first thing VP Singh did was to appoint Mufti Muhammad Said of Kashmir as the home minister uh, of his ministry and he remained uh, his home minister for the next 11 months now just Six days after the new government of VP Singh came into being with Mufti Muhammad uh, Syed as the Home Minister, Mufti Syed's daughter Rubaya Syed was kidnapped by JKLF terrorists. Rubaya Syed was a 23-year-old medical student and the JKLF demanded release of many terrorists in return of her release. So within the next four days only, five key terrorists were returned. which included terrorists like Mushtaq Ahmed Zargar or popularly known as Lathram. So this was the first big capitulation by the Indian state authority in Kashmir. The home ministry, the central government completely lost authority at that time in December 1989 between those 3-4 days. And it is said that had the VP Singh government not surrendered so easily and so badly to the Jekyll Elif, the coming days of Kashmir wouldn't have been that much dark. throughout the history it can be traced that the fastest way to spread terror is targeting the minorities be it in germany or be it in kashmir thus the kashmiri pandits were targeted again retired judge nilkant ganju journalist lawyer premnath bhai like this high profile kashmiri pandit targets were assassinated again to create an atmosphere of fear in the valley it was also rumored that the terrorists had a long list of kashmiri pandits so things had started going to wars in kashmir anti hindu movement started building up anti hindu posters were put up anti hindu advertisements appeared here and there and in a couple of urdu newspapers um, although uh, without any attribution as to who were they coming from had announcements like all kashmiri pandits should leave the valley or they will be killed so anti hindu campaigns and warnings to kashmiri pandits caused panic and the government at this time failed completely to handle the situation they failed to stop the terror they also failed to stop any of these kind of propagandas so in the middle of all this panic again vp singh's government succumbed to mufti mohammad said's pressure remember, remember i told you that Uh, this government was probably the weakest government in the history of india because it was very easy for this government to succumb to any kind of pressure without any resistance so uh, to the pressure of Mo- mufti mohammad said in his demand for a strong governor uh, for jammu and kashmir and also to the demand of lk advani led bjp uh, vp singh government again appointed jagmohan as the governor of kashmir for the second time on 19th january 1990 
now when the talks of appointing jagmohan as the governor for kashmir were going on faruk abdullah had showed his discomfort comfort because i told you that uh, jagmohan is popularly known as the master of dismissal and faruk abdullah knew that uh, you know uh, jagmohan had a history of dismissing government earlier so he did not trust jagmohan so he had uh, kind of given indication that if jagmohan comes as the governor of kashmir he will resign and that exactly what he did on 19th january 1990 jagmohan was appointed the governor of kashmir and on 20th january faruk abdullah resigned and again the state uh, went into president's rule under uh, governor jagmohan now with this indication of political instability of kashmir pakistani masterminds again raised pro pakistan and anti hindu voices slogans across the valley and again the government did not do anything these slogans were you know all over on the streets and through the loud loudspeakers of the mosques also the uh, slogans were uh, communicated the by this time the exodus was set for the kashmiri pandit families because by now they had decided to leave urgently because nobody was there or even trying to save them they left with whatever they little they had at that time on the very uh day faruk abdullah resigned in fact they left quite in the midnight of 19th january 1990 that is why 19 january 1990 is uh, you know is termed or uh, tagged as the black day to kashmiri pandits as on that cold chilly winter night in kashmir they were you know uh, there were screamings from loud speakers and crowded streets uh, for messages towards sikhs and hindus for to leave kashmir and they actually left uh, you know uh, hastily packed uh, packed their belongings in whatever transport they could find and the second uh, larger wave left in february march uh, and april most of the kashmiri pandits either they left kashmir or most of many of them were killed actually now to complement the uh, exodus of the kashmiri pandits on 19th and 20th january of 1990 on 21st january 1990 came another massacre which we call the gokadal massacre when crpf killed over 50 kashmiri muslim protesters on the gokadal bridge and it was one of the worst massacre in the longest history of conflict in kashmir it also shows how clueless the indian government was at that point of time so militancy was rising in kashmir army started to search for weapons in civilian houses reports of ill treatment with women started to come up uh, and to which people started protesting on streets and rapidly the situation escalated uncontrollably many people in kashmir were killed at that time and thousands of kashmiri people left kashmir during january 1990 till or by uh, april 1990 Now let us look into another debacle of uh, the V P Singh government. The essential characteristic of of V P Singh government was actually left liberal, uh, who said that they didn't like uh, this Jagmohan stuff attitude towards Kashmir and its people because he was actually beating up people, ki- killing people. You know there was uh, cross violence everywhere. So they felt that Kashmir needed a healing touch too. So they decided to do something even nuttier. That is. at that time it was uh, george fernandez who was the union railway minister for vp singh government and a special portfolio was created on kashmir affairs and he was sent to kashmir to give give that healing touch to the kashmir kashmiri people so fernandez was sent to kashmir to give that healing touch to kashmiri people in his attempt he tried to promote artisanship tourism or uh, you know trying to make sure that uh, the uh, the uh, uh, apples they produced there were sold for proper price so it was the same old problem of the vp singh government you see that where a fragile short lived government of 11 months was trying to work at cross purposes like having jagmohan the hard line on one side and george fernandez the soft side on the other hand but it does not work in politics that way a government cannot blow hot and cold at the same time so as expected by may 1990 things went so bad that fernandez and jagmohan were both very unhappy with each other to the extreme level as a result of which within a period of 2 3 weeks by may and june subsequently both of them were dismissed so once again kashmir was back to square one by which time kashmir had gone to a stage from which it has not 
recovered till date. So saddening, but this is the fact. By this time, the exodus and expulsion of Kashmiri Pandits, one of the most tragic events in Indian history, was fully over, and it was it has been never re reversed since then. Now, on this note, I would like to conclude this video. We came to know that by May June nineteen ninety, the major expulsion of the Kashmiri Pandits from the valley was over, and the saddening part is that till date uh, you know uh, they didn't know when they left kashmir that there would be no point of return kashmir is such a topic which cannot be summarized in one or two videos anyway we will have a part 2 of this video where we will try to look into the concluding events uh, of the chronology which i started discussing in this video as also we will also try to look into some real fact checking things like what is their exact situation at present something beyond the movie which is now much in discussion we will also try to look into their you know their demands what they are asking for and uh, what are their expectations like in the last 3 decades hardly their voices have been heard so uh, they don't have much expectations you know or rather expectations to be fulfilled but still i will try to uh, take you through their uh, uh, plight and voices their actual demands Uh, in in the next part of this uh, video till i see you next time thank you all